All right, what's up, guys? It is 8.30 p.m., night before the long run, and you know I like to say great workouts start the night before, and tomorrow morning we are going to be revisiting an old friend. And I was going to say an old favorite, but it is not an old favorite because I did not quite get along with this shoe when I was testing it. This is the Nike Alpha Fly 3 here. Got about 50 miles on it right now, and something about the geometry down here didn't quite work for me the first time around, but there are lots of good things that I did like about the shoe. This air unit up in the front and the way that this foam feels. And I've actually been a big favorite of other Nike racing shoes like the Vaporfly 2 and the Vaporfly 3 here. And I know with more availability coming out of the Alpha Fly 3, we got the Volt colorway and that new blueprint pack colorway, which by the way looks fire. I know more people are gonna be considering getting the shoe. So I wanna revisit this for a 22 mile long run. I did take this up for a few long runs initially when I got it back in January, but one of those things where I wanna give this guy another shot, maybe something will hit with it this time that didn't the first time around. It's like listening to an album. Sometimes it doesn't click right away. So tomorrow morning, I will see you guys bright and early. We are gonna lace these things up for a long run and I'll also talk you through some of the other marathon racers and which ones have been my favorites for training long runs. All right, let's get into it. All right, guys, good morning. Bright and early, 4.31 a.m. Long run prep time, let's get into it. All right, guys, first 20 miler back after the marathon and I'm excited because it's back to business. This is what I was thinking about last night, man. I love just running. I don't love recovering. I don't love feeling banged up after a race. So I love that we can get out there again and just do what we do, man. And it might not be the best. It might not be the prettiest 22 miler or 20 miler today, but we're going to get it done regardless. And that's my mentality usually going into races or whenever I'm ramping up mileage again. Doesn't need to be quality all the time especially if it's the first time doing hold on i gotta put on the coffee grinder all right that was loud and long but by the way this is what we're rocking with today september coffee company we got the jorge rojas from colombia the bourbon coffee double fermentation honey process absolute fire it's got those tropical notes man flames but as i was saying whenever i'm oh man and we need to refill the water this is going to take a second but whenever i'm rebuilding mileage or attempting long runs again after a little bit of a layoff or doing anything hard for the first time when it comes to volume i do not try to add in any pace challenge on top of that so Today, 22 miles back might be a little bit different just because we're coming off the marathon and I do have a ton of these 22, 20 milers with pace under my belt, so maybe we'll throw some pace in there. But in general, if I were building up to 20 mile long runs for the first time, and I said this in the video I did on how, to, how I ran a sub three marathon, the three things I did, I didn't put a ton of pace work into the 16 mile long runs or 20 mile long runs that I did while I was first building up my strength. And so you gotta do it slow before you could do it fast. That's what I've been saying. That's what I've been thinking about high mileage and volume recently. There's a progression to it. And not only does the slower miles, or not only do the slower miles help build that aerobic base and you get all these internal adaptations, but it also helps so that you're more comfortable mentally once you've hit 20 miles three to four times at your regular pace, then adding some faster reps in there makes sense. All right, I'm gonna let this coffee warm up. Let's, let's cut some bread. So yeah, today we got the bread and the donuts. These are the fire donuts from the farmer's market. Shout out to, let's see, yeah. Shout out to Team Rose Bread, man. These guys hold it down. They're a family here out of Charlotte. They make bread out of their carport. They converted it into a bakery. It's flames. So in terms of fueling and food, I will usually try to eat a few pieces of toast or bagel before these long runs. And then I'll probably, today I'll do a little carb drink before as well. 
And then the biggest thing, though, is making sure the dinner the night before and the lunch the night before is quality because those are the most important meals. This is really just topping up. And I wasn't planning to do this, but Charlie came through with the fire plating. We got the polenta with the vegan bolognese and the parmesan on top. I always say the best workouts start the night before. We are starting early. Look at that. Boom. Fire. And so my fueling strategy last block was actually really solid. I didn't have any issues with fueling. And during the race, too, my fueling strategy was good. So I'm going to keep rocking with what's been working for me. You change what doesn't work, but you don't change what's been working. So I'm going to keep rocking with what's been working. All right, let's see if this water's ready. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I just got a new my eight roaster. Put you in a shower. No, sir. Who is the most influential rap artist of the 2010s? And why is it Chief Keef? Yes, sir. Chief Keef invented drill, man. It's funny, Kanye in that, in his, uh, like that remix said he invented drill. And I ain't gonna lie, it was chop. <laughs> that was funny. All right, I have to grind a little more coffee, I think. All right, boom, there we go, finally. All right, so the reason that I'm doing a 22 mile long run or 20 mile long run a few weeks after the race is because this is a building block for me. Other than doing the 10 milers, 10 to 12 milers in the morning, the best thing that I've done for my fitness is these 20 to 22 mile long runs. And so I was consistent with them doing it every week for about three or four months throughout this year and so i feel pretty confident and comfortable hitting this length and i don't want to take too much time off from it now that my body feels 95 maybe more maybe 98 percent recovered i feel 100 percent recovered but i'm sure there's something that's not 100 percent recovered from the marathon that no matter what event you're training for and i haven't decided what event i'm training for next doing these long runs can help anything anything longer than 800 meters doing a long run can help. So they're all aerobic distances. All right, penultimate pour here. But yeah, one of the things that's really worked for me to improve my training, especially as a self-coached athlete, well, there's a few things, but the main thing is committing to non-negotiables. So weekly mileage, committing to hitting a certain number, or long runs committing to hit a certain length or days run per week committing to hit a certain number of days run per week. That's one of the things that's really worked for me as a self-coached athlete where I'm not going to have the external structure and the external pressure to execute a certain way. Staying accountable to myself, I'm, that's a stronger force than anything, staying accountable to yourself if you can do it. But that's what's really worked for me throughout my half marathon and marathon training is committing to a certain set of requirements each block. I haven't 100% decided what my long run requirements are going to be, but I'm thinking I want to do consistent 20 milers again. Uh, we got the toast. Locks loaded, ready to go. And it is, uh, it's 4.58 a.m. already right now. Spent too much time looking at people's comments. Boom. Man, look at this. This bread is fire. I love homemade bread or not homemade, but bread that's not made in a factory. So good. Man, look at that. I don't know what that is, but look at that green vegetable from the farmer's market. It's blooming. And this jam also from the farmer's market, best jam ever. He's not lying. It is the best jam ever. Shout out to this guy. Raspberry blood orange. It slaps. Boom. Gotta get Charlie's, of course. Man, if you have a partner, if you live with a partner, even a roommate, and you only make coffee for yourself in the morning, you're doing it wrong, man. You gotta make the squad coffee, or your wife, or your husband, or your roommate. It's just a nice thing to wake up. If you're the second or third one to wake up in the house to some coffee, 
That's a nice thing, man. So today we made Charlie coffee with the imported beans from Ottawa, Canada, bro. Imported beans from Canada, 20 miles just to increase the stamina, but I'm not a rapper. Look at that, bro. I got the custom drawing from Mason. Boom, to daddy. Put some respect on my name. So I mentioned this last night, but one of the reasons why I want to use the Alpha Fly today is because I know they're releasing it and more colorways and availability will go up. But I also didn't, I didn't get along with it too much the first time that I was using it. And I got 50 miles in it probably within a month. And sometimes when that happens, I like to let the shoes rest and come back to them. And since I've run in the Alpha Fly, I've tested a lot more marathon racing shoes. And one of my goals right now is to run in all of the racing shoes on the market. And well, all the racing shoes that are widely available on the US market. And people are people are commenting, asking if I'm gonna test the Chinese brands. I don't know, man. Right now, well, I don't want the CCP to come for me. So I'm not gonna say anything. But right now I'm thinking probably not. We'll see though. One Chinese brand did reach out to me. They're more of a training shoe brand. And they asked if, if I wanted to review some stuff and maybe they're going to send me some stuff. So I don't know. It's if these brands want to send me stuff potentially, but I'm not going to be buying random brands that aren't widely available on the U S market. But since the alpha fly, okay, I've run in the, both of the new ASIC shoes, the new balance shoe, the Saucony endorphin pro four, the Diodora Gara. If I went into my office and just looked, it would be a lot easier than just listing them off my head. The tier of Valkyrie Elite. And what a lot of those shoes had that the Alpha Fly didn't was some better stability and not just stability, but oh, also Hocus Yellow X1. Not just stability. And I don't know why I did it like this. This is a weird, this is a weird process. I should have just done one first. This is what happens when I try to multitask. I'm not, my brain isn't built for multitasking. So I did, I did double dollop first instead of just completing one. But yeah, what I didn't love about the Alpha Fly 3 was that it, for me, as more of a heel striker at marathon pace, and a lot of us out there, I'm not going to say most because I don't have that lab verified data, but I would bet, no John Tape order, but I would bet that most of us out there are going to be a little bit more heel strikers than we are mid to forefoot striker. And it also that tends to, if that's your natural way of running, it tends to ease off the stress and pressure on your calves. I have a friend who's a strong forefoot striker and he actually had a calf cramp during the marathon. It can put a lot of pressure on your calves and shoes like the Nike Alpha Fly 3 can put some more pressure on your calves. And people say, you gotta build up your calf strength, bro. You gotta get in the gym and do some calf raises. I don't know. I do a lot of hill running, but the point is the shoe didn't work as well for me for my natural mechanics as some of the other shoes out there. And let me actually see if I can bring it out here. Don't tell Charlie. We're gonna, we're gonna go where all the secret stashes, bro. Oh man, I'm tripping over shoes everywhere. That's crazy. All right, so take a look at this. You can see here, and oh, man, this still has sand on it from that. The last run that I did in this was at the American Tobacco Trail near Cary, and it's a soft surface trail, so this still has a ton of sand from that, and I just got on my pants, so we will not be lacing these up inside or putting them here, so I'm just going to have to hold it, but take a look at where the foam ends in the heel. Let me see if I can get a good... Yeah, okay, two ends. So you can see that the foam in the back here ends before where the heel ends, and that means, and for any shoe that does this, this is not exclusive to the Alpha Fly. The Brooks Hyperion Max version one does this. There's a few other shoes that do this. And it makes it really, even the Hoka Cielo X1 to a lesser extent does this because they need to get more foam in the heel here, 40 millimeters of foam. And it makes it feel as a heel striker, like you're fighting over a bump in the midfoot to roll through to the forefoot. And unless you're landing completely flat, or up on the balls of your feet, it feels just a little bit odd. And so maybe that will change today. Maybe we'll get a little bit of a different sensation out of this shoe. And I really want to like this shoe. And I know a lot of people at much different paces than mine, both slower and faster, like this shoe. And I've had people 
tell me that. So today I'm going into it with an open mind. I'm actually going into it with more than open mind. I actively want to find the things about this shoe that I like. And I'm hoping that maybe because we're at a different cycle of the training, my legs are a little bit fresher. Maybe I can run a little bit faster on this long run than I was doing when I was testing the shoe. Maybe it'll work a little bit better for my natural mechanics then. But all right, I need to eat this food. It is already 510. I burned like 30 minutes responding to people's comments. It's like email. Don't get sucked into email. I heard this great quote that email is somebody else's to-do list or it's other people's to-do list for you. I feel the same way about <laughs> responding to comments sometimes. I love responding to comments, but we got to stay. We got a mission. We got to do this long run. So I got to eat my food and I'll be back to talk more about Alpha and some other shoes. All right, guys. So I wanted to do a little quick overview of some of the other race shoes that I've done 20 milers in and which ones have been my favorite specifically for long runs not necessarily for racing and by the way before we get into this somebody asked me how can I afford all of these shoes so there's a little bit of a mix here some of these I bought myself and then some of these the brands have been sending me but I do have a nine to five job which is how I can afford all these shoes it's how I afforded to start this channel the thing is though I put in a lot of work with all the own, the I had, I don't know, 10 pairs of shoes that I'd accumulated over the period of a year. And if you look at the videos I made in 2023, a lot of the videos were with the same 10 shoes, just grinding, figuring out different ways to talk about the shoes that I had. And now we got this arsenal, which is pretty cool. But I put the work in with the resources that I had. And now budget's getting a little bit bigger from the channel. And thankfully, I'm really appreciative the brands are starting to send some stuff. So some of these shoes here, by the way, the thing is not all the brands are sending me stuff. I dropped $500 of my own money to get the sky and the edge. So I really appreciate when you guys watch, you support, because that means we get some more money coming in to buy some more shoes. But first up, let's talk about the sky here. Not this guy, the sky. So this was similar to the Alpha Fly a little bit in that it didn't feel the best for long runs for landing on the heel back here and super aggressive fast light shoe. This is what I raced my marathon in but not my favorite for long runs. And then the edge here I actually have not taken this out for a long run yet but let's move down the line here. Saucony Endorphin Pro 4. So you guys have heard me talking about this guy probably every video I've made in the past week or so. This is one of my favorite shoes in the game right now. Not just for a race shoe, not just as a long run shoe, but in general. I absolutely love everything about it. You get the carbon fiber plate, you get the racing foam, but you also get a decent amount of stability. Not the best for stability, but a nice easy to run and feel. I like this more than the training version of the shoe. I think most people will benefit more from this shoe than the training version. It's one of the most comfortable racing shoes something i couldn't say about the training shoe it has this one piece upper and it just works well for every pace that i've run in it so this would probably be one of my favorites of all these shoes here for long runs and then it's moving down the line boop, boop, boop. and i'll do a full video soon on my favorite racing shoes but both of these guys here tier valkyrie elite and the New Balance SC Elite V4. This was a little bit too much shoe for my liking. Felt like because of the lower drop, there's just a lot of foam underneath the forefoot. It's also, it was almost like driving a boat or something with how wide it is. So comfortable shoe, nice and stable, but something with the foam here wasn't my favorite. It felt like there's just a little bit too much going on. But then back here, Diodora Gara. Let's take this guy out. This one goes up there with the Saucony Endorphin Pro 4 for one of my favorites in this racing segment for long runs. And the foam is soft. You get a nice little flip off the toe here from the plate. One downside is a $300 shoe. And a few people have messaged me saying that they got the shoe and they're disappointed with the durability. So I would highly caution you right now until I can put some more miles in the shoe and until we get some more reports coming out for durability. I would caution you, I don't know, I'm not gonna say caution against buying the shoe, I'll just throw it out there. Just giving you the information that maybe this is not the durable shoe that Diodora said it would be because that is one of the things they explicitly called out in the marketing copy that, that they put rubber that was designed for durability. So a little bit disappointing to hear that, but fun, fast ride with a nice soft foam. 
and then Adidas Audios Pro 3. I still need to test this guy some more, but nothing about it was that remarkable to me when I tested it. And I know a lot of people do like this shoe for long runs and training because of how durable it is. So I'm going to put some more long run miles on this thing pretty soon because I am really excited to test it. If I hadn't been hyping up the Alpha Fly 3, I might just switch to this one here. <laughs> but maybe uh, within the next few weeks, we'll do a 16 plus miler in this guy. And then Vaporfly 3 and 2, I like this shoe for shorter distances. Wouldn't really want to take it past a half marathon personally, not enough support for me. And the foam is super soft, so not even going to attempt right now to do a 20 miler in it. Maybe some point in the summer, once we're feeling super fast, we'll do a 20 miler in this guy. And then the last one I wanted to talk about back there, we've got the Hoka CLOX1. Another one of my favorites. It's got a super aggressive curved rocker bottom here. You get more foam in this shoe than almost any other racing shoe because of the geometry trickeries they did in the back here. And it really puts you up on your toes while also being a pretty stable platform. So at some paces, it could feel a little bit weird as a heel striker. But in general, this was a really fun, fast, but also soft shoe to run in. And I did a workout where I had 16 miles of marathon pace and two miles at threshold and the shoe performed really well. So one of my top three of these shoes for long runs during training. All right, I need to finish my coffee now, get changed, because it is 5.40, I wanna head out pretty soon. Oh, by the way, this is the newest race shoe to come into the mix here, the Rocket X2. I have not tested this on a long run yet. It was amazing for the 10 mile tempo I did in it, and I'm thinking this might be my new go-to for short distance races but it didn't feel like it had the most comfort and cushion up here in the forefoot and throughout the platform in general for longer distance races. It was a little bit of a firmer foam feel, which I liked, not as soft and squishy as the Zoom X, but probably wouldn't be the most supportive for 20 plus mile long runs. And that's really where the Cielo X1 comes into play. So all right, close this morning. We're going with the features socks. My favorite running shirt here, my Nike running division shirt. This is actually what I raced my marathon in. I've done two or three, I think I've done three three races in this now. And then I think it's a little bit cold, so we might go with this quarter zip, let's see. Uh, it says it's 58, so I don't know, we'll see when we get out there. And then I do have the pants. I thought it was gonna be, Charlie said it was supposed to be like a high of 53 today, but we might have to change into shorts if it's already 58, we'll see. <laughs> Man, look at this. How often does this happen? It's actually getting colder throughout the run. So now it's 58 and raining. It's going to be 56 at 7 a.m. and then 53 at 8 a.m. So we have a little bit of a cold front coming in, but it's just funny to see that because that never happens, especially in the spring and summer here. Usually it's like 58 at 5 a.m., 68 at 6 a.m., and then 93 by 7 a.m. So I think we'll probably just rock with the shorts and quarter zip get a little bit of protection from the rain we'll be good sorry rock with the pants we're gonna rock with the patagonia pants so these are the yeah the long the long numbers the long gonias pull up with that long lasting swag bro put some respect on the earth all right 603 a.m time to get moving last thing we got to do is i think i'm gonna take the tailwind fuel out with me today so oh, where's my water bottle so we're gonna have to do the pre-mix drink so yeah, this morning I'm gonna do the Tailwind Endurance Fuel. This is just some carbs for out there on the run, replenish those glycogen stores. And I used to do long runs with no fuel, especially when I was doing 16 miles and below for my long runs. But now that I'm consistently getting up past two hours, I like to fuel during my long runs and I feel it helps with the recovery after as well. Not just the performance during, but I can finish the run not feeling like I need to throw up right at the end because I've just completely expended everything and my stomach has only bile left in it. So this is good for run performance and then also making that post-run recovery a little bit smoother. Now I'm going with the raspberry caffeinated flavor of the Tailwind Endurance Fuel today. And then I might bring out, I think I have one more Morton Gel for my marathon. I might bring out one of those too, just to, to pop that at some point. I always feel like 2015 future when I mix this up. Oh, that bubbly, oh, that money, oh, that money, drink it bubbly. I was going in, I'm going cold and crazy. All right, guys, one sip. Everybody knows rules. 
actually wasn't as bad. I think because we took a little break from it, I was slamming this pretty much every day. Well, not every day, sorry. Every week, every day would be excessive. But every week for like two or three months and it just got brutal because it is not a mildly flavored drink. They really go hard with the fruit flavors, but that was actually okay. But yeah, I, ca I can't do this every week. That's why I switched to the gels just because the flavor gets a little bit tough after a while. Let's see if we can insert this properly. I think that's the right way. Let me see if I can go find that gel. Yeah, I finished the marathon with one gel left. I actually had two, but then I gave one to a dude who blew up and was walking at mile 23. So shout out to that dude. I hope you had a strong finish from the Morton gel. But we're gonna take this, use it at some point out there. I think we're ready to go, let's do it. Game time, let's go. Slug watch, let's see. It's like the Rich the Kid song. Slug watch. Right, it is raining a little bit. Slug walk. No, 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 with the slug talk. All right, guys, so plan for this wet and rainy run is 20 to 22 miles. And I want to do most of these at my normal aerobic pace. So I've been doing my aerobic runs at a 7 to... 7.30 pace. Today might be more like around 7.30 to 8 in the beginning, but probably around 7.30 for most of it. And then around mile 10 to 12, I want to drop it down a little bit for a few miles and see how it feels. So I'm not putting a crazy pace goal on today because it's the first long run back after the marathon. I want to see how my legs are feeling. Last week we did 16. I did a fast finish, but Boy, my legs were not recovered. I felt like I was dragging at the end of that 16. So today, we'll see how it is. But lacing up the Alpha Fly 3 here, and this upper is elite. It is top notch. Man. It just hugs the foot perfectly. This is one of the best fitting uppers in the game for the race shoes. I'll put it right up there with the Socket Endorphin Pro 4. And like the Pro 4, it has this one piece upper look. Now the downside of the shoe, what I was talking about is on the back here, you can see where the foam cuts off. It feels like I have to even lean a little bit forward, even just standing here, to get a normal feel underfoot because my center of gravity is typically a little bit further back on the shoe than where it wants me to be. But we'll see how it is out there. All right. Nice enough, this right shoe. And yeah, it is, it is a little bit chilly. It's not too bad, but it's funny that it's going to be dropping in temperature. So we don't have to worry about heat as an enemy today. No worries about heat. All right, first 20 miler back, let's do it. All right, guys, bang, 22 miles, 6.45 pace, two hours, 28 minutes. Man, I could have put up another sub three marathon today. I should have just closed it out with some four miles there at a 6.50 pace. But anyway, we got 22 miles in the Alpha Fly 3 and we were moving. These things were just locked in today. It's like driving a Lambo. Man, you don't always want to take out the Lambo for a two and a half hour drive, but if you want to whip it, I don't know because I'm not a Lamborghini owner, but I'm thinking if you want to drive fast for two and a half hours, 
maybe you'll pull out that Aventador. And I, we've been driving a lot of Range Rovers and Cullinans and Escalades out here with these comfortable Max Cushion shoes and Grand Wagoneers like the 1080 V13. Today, we went lean and mean with the Alpha Fly 3. And these things, I called it the Marathon PR Assault Weapon in my review. I know I was a little bit down on it, but I did call it the Assault Weapon back then. And man, we were assaulting some pace out there today. I finished with the 6 flat and then a 540. So we're back in the lab, man. I'm feeling good. Feeling good today. Shout out Larry June. We got the orange and everything on these. All right, I'm going to take these off and then let's talk through the performance. Do a little breakdown of how these did. So this exact run this is the reason that i like to come back to shoes and revisit them if they don't hit this is what happened with a, a few other shoes in the past that at first i didn't love it and then i came back to it and it won me over and the reason why i like to do that is because how i perceive a shoe or how a shoe feels for me is really influenced by what cycle of training i'm in and right now i'm in a strong cycle i'd finished the marathon two weeks ago and i'm fully recovered i think today we can say i'm 100 recovered and the reason my recovery took so short of a time was because i didn't race up to my potential and i ran a lot of miles last block so i was able to recover super quickly because i pulled the mileage down for the two weeks going in and then the last two weeks the mileage has been down as well so my body has bounced back really nicely Last week I did that 16 miler just to give myself a little bit more time even to, to recover. But now we're hundred percent in, man, I'm hungry. I don't know what I'm hungry for, but I'm hungry to, to do some damage out here this summer. Maybe we'll go for, maybe we'll go for another half marathon PR, but throwing down a 540 mile, a mile 22 of a 22 mile long run out in the Hills. I love it. All right, let's do a little breakdown of these shoes. Hey, Daddy, let's get our fire. Nike Alpha Fly 3. You know what makes them special? What makes it different than any other shoe? Can you see? You see one thing that's cool? Yes. Yeah. Yep. That's called the Zoom Air Unit. So far, she's cost one Nike Alpha Fly 3 worth of diapers. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Hey, pull up with the baby Joy. We have one sweet, chill baby, and then one two-year-old who hits people with sticks. <laughs> I'm kidding. What are those? Okay, Where are those, Mace? Are those 880s? Yeah, also look at Serving with the Athleta Fleece. All right, a little intermission there. Talking to Charles and the kids, but now we actually got to do this breakdown. And seems like it might be starting to rain again. It is gray and cold. It did drop in temperature for sure, but it's perfect running weather, man. 55 degrees and no sun, gray like this with a little bit of mist. That is the recipe for a good long run. So shout out God. All right, it does look like it's gonna start pouring out here. I can see the rain coming. I can feel the rain coming, but I do wanna do the breakdown on the Nike Alpha Fly 3. Let's make sure we got the right lighting on this guy. Bang, look at that. Look at that contrast. Look at that orange Zoom Air unit. But Nike Alpha Fly 3, 22 mile long run. This was my third long run in this shoe. And so I'll throw up the stats from the previous long runs. So it got a. Uh... There we go. I'll throw up the stats for the previous long runs right here. The first one I did, I think it was also a 20 or a 22. Similar to today where I started off at a more relaxed pace and then I eased into it with a fast finish. But I think my average pace for that run was probably about a 7.10. Then I did another long run that was an 18 miler that was supposed to be a 20 to 22 miler down at the American Tobacco Trail or out its northeast of us in Kerry. That run was an absolute disaster. I was coming off a week at Duke. That was my last week at Duke for my MBA program. It was an underfueled mess. One of my worst runs of all time, probably. And I had to cut it short to 18 miles. And then I hadn't touched the shoe since then. I brought it out today. It's like bringing out one of those. I don't have multiple cars, but I imagine it would be like bringing out that fast car when you just want to curve some corners. And that's what we did today. We were curving, carving, and cruising in the Nike Alpha Fly 3 here. And so first few miles at that 730 pace, it felt okay. And this is why I was a little bit tepid, mediocre, lukewarm about the shoe when I reviewed it. And specifically for recreational runners, for most of us 
who aren't going to be running 240, 230, 220 marathons at that 730 and 7 flat pace. For me, it just didn't feel like I was getting the most benefit out of this shoe and it felt like I would have done a lot better in a shoe like Saucony Endorphin Pro 4 or the Adidas Adios Pro 3. I know a lot of you guys like that shoe or the New Balance SC Elite V4. And I came out here and I did this video about why pace matters when selecting a race shoe. And I was comparing this shoe to the SC Elite V4 and that video actually went viral. That's my most viewed video of all time. I think it struck a chord, it struck a nerve, it resonated with a lot of people, this idea that we have to pick the tools that work for us. And at that 7.30, 7.15, seven flat pace, for me, this is not the tool that I would be picking and I still stand by that. Even today at this average 6.45 pace, 22 mile long run, this is not the shoe that I wanted on my foot for the first hour of that effort. However, as we eased into the run, as we warmed up into the run, and this was one of my favorite long runs I think I've done probably ever because I slowly warmed up into it. I gradually increased the pace and I finished a lot faster than I started. And the shoe felt better and better and better as I increased my pace throughout the run. And so in those middle miles, as I was getting down to that seven flat and below pace started clipping off, 650s, 640s, and then 630s at the end, the shoe started feeling really nice. And what I love about the feeling of this shoe is when running faster, I was getting the right amount of compression from the Zoom X foam and then just the right amount of support and pop up here in the forefoot from these pods. And this is not a firm shoe by any means, but it does have this real mechanical feeling to it. It feels like you're running on top of technology, like you have a pencil sharpener strapped to the bottom of your foot. It's not like one of those other shoes that you just get a massive stack of foam and you're out there cruising like the Saucony Endorphin Pro 4 or even the New Balance SC Elite V4. It is a much different feel. And so for me, as a more powerful runner, clipping off those 630s and 620s, putting a lot of force down into the shoe, I felt like I was getting a lot of benefit from these pods. And I think if I were to go for a 240 marathon, or a low 240s marathon, this could be a viable shoe for me. And that's what I said in my review of it. And I still stand by that, that this is a marathon PR assault weapon. And if you're going for a marathon PR and going to be running with strength and finishing the run with strength, this is an awesome shoe. And so even though it didn't feel ideal for me for the first hour, I was still in control of the shoe for that first hour. It was comfortable enough for me to run in it. I didn't have any weird rubbing or hot areas in the upper, but it just wasn't the right shoe for the mechanics and for the not powerful style of running I had in the beginning of that run. But the thing is, man, as we're running with strength and finishing with strength, it's like this is a battery strapped to your foot. And that's what I meant with the pencil sharpener. You get sharper as you go along with the shoe if you have the strength to maintain what the shoe is giving you. It's not a shoe that you're gonna get a lot of benefit from if you're landing out in the heel running with sloppy form. But as I was popping off the forefoot here, and today I was running really strong at the end, getting down to six flat and sub six paces, this felt like the perfect shoe for this run. And to be honest, man, I haven't gotten along with the air units in the shoe every time that I've run in it, but today I did. I was getting a lot of benefit from popping off the forefoot here. And this is something I wanted to talk about with the Alpha Fly in particular, because Nike is one of the first brands, if not the first brand, to offer two top tier marathon racing shoes in the market with really distinct feels. And this is one of the things that I'm gonna get in my bag about this, about the Metaspeed Sky versus Edge. It drove me wild because there is not a lot of difference between those shoes. There's a slight difference in where the plate is positioned and I really hate even putting those two words together, but there, there's no different technology in those two shoes. There is a huge difference between the Vaporfly and the Alpha Fly because of these air units here. And Nike is one of the only brands on the market, if not the only brand that actually has a different technology than just a foam in a plate. And that is the cool thing about the Alpha Fly here. Whether or not you think these pods are a gimmick, and I do not think they're a gimmick. These things are legit. I could totally feel the benefit of them today, but Nike is still the only brand that's offered something new in the way of technology. And we have brands trying to get around the 40 millimeter stack height rule like Mizuno and Hoka by stuffing more foam underfoot, but those are not step change 
innovations. Those are shortcuts or workarounds or gimmicks to offer a different running experience than another marathon racing shoe, but Nike is still the only one that has anything that's totally different. And so there are some new things trickling out this year, like the Puma Fast R Nitro 2 that has the extended plate and the Adidas Evo that's going for the lighter weight. And I think that's the next frontier of racing shoes is super lightweight racing shoes, but Nike's still the only one with this different piece of tech to give offers a different ride. And so that's cool. That's why I wanted to give this another shot. And I'm glad I brought this out today. This was an awesome shoe for a strong first 22 miler back. I'm amped up to, I don't know, crush another goal. I'm not sure what it's going to be yet. So good job, Alpha Fly. I want to break down my splits after this, but last thing I'll say is upper and fit on this is amazing. This is a really comfortable fitting upper. I said this in the full review I did of the shoe as well, and that still stands. Uh, I'm, try I'm trying not to use the L word, but the way that this shoe straps onto your foot is amazing. I was not wiggling around at all, and it is a decently wide toe box here, so really comfortable on foot. There's really no areas that weren't comfortable for me. The only thing is landing out here in the back is not the most fun experience when I'm not running with speed. But other than that, everything about the shoe today was great. And it was raining a little bit at the beginning and the grip on here was solid. Again, not as good as Puma or Adidas and no shoe really is, but a really solid shoe other than that. And so we have about, I think 70 miles on this guy now. I'll make sure I check my Strava after this and it's holding up well, not losing the pop at all. It's not losing that zing off the forefoot. The Zoom X foam still feels great. And I'm actually starting to wonder if they tuned this Zoom X just a little bit firmer than in the Vaporfly. It does feel like it's standing up a little bit better to me than the Vaporfly, but that also might just be because of the Zoom Air units up in the forefoot here. So that's all I have on the shoe for now. I'm gonna go inside and shower and then we can break down my split. All right guys, I forgot there's one more thing that I wanted to say. I was thinking about this as I was out there on the run and that is commitment. That's the word of the day for me, the word that I'm gonna be meditating on, commitment. And I was realizing, man, it's not about the love of the game. It's not about passion. It's not even about drive because some days I feel like I don't have the drive to make a video or go on a run but you know, what matters is i committed to doing it and so that's what gets me out of bed at 4 30 a.m to go knock out this long run and if i'm committed to it every week it might not be a nice beautiful progression long run every week ripping off six flat pace but it increases the chances of getting performance or getting better performance the more that we do it and by committing ourselves to the cause. And so for me, I realized if I wanted to do something different with my life, I had to commit to doing something every day. And that's what I've been doing with this channel, man. And that's what I do with the running, not every day, but every week. So in the words of Boss Man Dilo, if you want to be a boss, you got to pay the price. And that price is committing yourself to doing something every day or every week. Let's go. Recovery time. What are you cooking? Mac and cheese. Put some respect on that macaroni. Hey, Roni. Right, real recovery time. Hey, pull up like I'm Walter White. Going nuts at the Pyrex. Alright, this is the real recovery right here. Bang. Team Rosebread Donuts. Best donuts in Charlotte right here. And they're vegan. Alright, I gotta unstick this. Look at that man, boom, sourdough donut. You cannot beat that. I right, gotta pull up with some oat milk real quick. Boom. Boom, shout out Doug from Team Rosebread. That's my guy. All right, one bite, everybody knows the rules. Why are you, no, but why are you doing it? Fire. Fire flames. Homemade vegan cheese sauce, look at that. Had to brighten that up, boom. Cashews, nutritional yeast, salts, oat milk. Lemon. Oh, okay. Pull up with the vinegar. Salt, fat, acid, heat.
Man, it is just a rainy day here. It's rainy season here in North Carolina. Bang, look at that. She added the breadcrumbs and the little parm on top. Elite, elite. Bang, look at that lunch. Homemade mac and cheese with the cashew-based vegan cheese sauce. A Little bit of crispy breadcrumbs and vegan parm on top. Bam, kick it up a notch. Charlie out here chefing like she's Emerald. And she made those vegan hot dogs for the kids. Put some respect on her name. Homemade vegan hot dogs. Just kidding. And this is the secret sauce right here. Never get too bougie for Frank's, man. Frank's holds it down. All right, guys, so you know what time it is. It is time. Well, I don't know if you know what time it is. We brought the Alpha Fly 3s out here just in case we need them, but it is time to sip some coffee. We got the fermented anaerobic natural processed coffee. This is straight fire, man. And I just ordered two more bags of similar coffee from Black and White Roasters here in North Carolina. But it is time to break down the splits. And I also want to talk through some questions that I got on Strava and just things in general that have been coming up because I did that video yesterday about three things that I did, I personally did within my training to break through that three hour mark in the marathon. So I thought we'd take a little bit of time here to sip on some good coffee and go through those questions. All right, but first up, let us dive into Strava. And I don't always break down my splits after the long runs, but because this was a good run and because of what the splits looked like, I did want to go through it. And so yesterday, one of the things that I talked about in that how to break three hours video I did was the importance of the 22 miler for me and my training and how that was a huge piece in not just building fitness, but giving me the confidence to tackle two sub threes within a span of a month. And so if you look at my splits today, like I told you, I was going to hang back seven thirties in the beginning and drop it down at around mile 12. I was actually just generally feeling pretty good warming up into it and around mile six is where we dropped to that seven flat pace and then it was just a beautiful progression throughout this whole run almost every mile was a progression the effort was a progression the only weak point really the only weak mile of this entire run was mile 20 where we dropped from a 613 to a 622 but this is always a mile where i have a little bit of trouble it's the same, if you look at mile nine here, we drop from a 654 to a 659. That's actually the same mile because I do two loops of the same course out here. And so getting onto, if you can see this map actually, most of this is done in my neighborhood. And then I have to pop out right here onto the main road. And it's a little bit windier always and I gotta go around some corners. And even though my neighborhood's hilly, something about just flowing through the beautiful tree line streets here and it's more relaxing for me so I feel like I can hold pace a little bit better even though it is up and down and then when I get onto the main road it's a little bit trickier so that's that's something I got to work on that change of terrain because there are also some points during the Coast Guard Marathon I did where I was changing from I mean that had you going through an Air Force base so I had to change from running through neighborhoods to running through the Air Force base and like 51 like the street out here was also very flat so this is a good point to discuss actually practicing running on the terrain that you're going to be racing on. That's why I picked the Coast Guard Marathon because it's a flatter race and I don't have flats around here and I want to prepare for Chicago. But that's something to work on. Maybe that's what, that'll be my goal next week, holding pace better on 51 on that straight section. But today, nice progression here. And then we were holding that 630, 640, dropping down to 630s from mile 12 to about 19. And that is... That's the trickiest stretch for me mentally because first 10 miles, your legs aren't tired for the most part. You're, you're going to be warming up into it still. For me, at least, it takes about 30 minutes, maybe even 40 minutes to feel truly warmed up. I didn't feel like I hit my stride on this run until mile six. But yeah, once I get to that 12 mile mark, it's about what, 90 minutes into the run. You still got an hour to 90 minutes, so you still have over an hour left. You still have double-digit mileage left if you're going to 22, and that's kind of the no-man's land 
this territory right here. And so today I was able to hold on to some pace pretty good. And there's nothing I did that was different. I just was locked into a good mental space. And this is one of the toughest things with running and having the right pair of shoes on can actually fix this. Just being confident that you're going to be able to execute whatever's on the schedule for today. And I knew that I wanted to do a strong finish. And this is how I want to run most of my long runs a cycle. I'm not going to run them all at a 645 pace. I might be running some of them at a 730 or maybe even an eight minute pace, depending on how I feel. Hopefully not. But I want to commit to fast finishing. Some days that might be a 650 pace or even a seven flat pace, but I knew I wanted to drop it down. And so this this day, I was just comfortable and confident that Alpha Flies were a great shoe for that. They held on to that pace really nicely. And as I was progressing, it felt like these just kept getting faster and worked really well for that run today. And the one thing I didn't mention earlier is they do feel really light on foot. This is a light shoe. It's not as light as the Vaporfly. It's not as light as the Asics, Metaspeed, Sky, and Edge Paris. But compared to basically every other racing shoe out there, this is going to be a lot lighter. This came in at 220 grams in my U.S. men's 10.5. Something like the Saucony Endorphin Pro 4 is 240. I think the New Balance SCLE V4, that was around 250. Hoka CLOX1 is 270 to 280. So this is a light shoe, which is nice for a long run. I don't mind running in a heavier shoe, but for a day where we're trying to do a progression and rip some serious pace, even getting down to sub six, the Alpha Fly was perfect for that. So let's bang on into this run so 12 to 19 it was just being in a good mental space being positive feeling like the man and that that's something too right some days i'll get out here and i'll tell myself this is not my day i don't have it maybe i'm coming off a hard week of training today i was also not coming off a hard week of training i actually took yesterday off which is another thing i'm trying to do during this block i'm not going to take all Saturdays off, but doing eight miles really nice and gentle on the treadmill, just some relaxed running or something like that is going to be the plan. And I also didn't do a double on Friday. So I was coming to this run fresh, but other runs coming into it tired. Maybe I only slept six hours a night before. Maybe I didn't have a great, I don't know, maybe I was in a weird place from something that happened with work the night before. Today I was okay i was i wasn't in the best place mentally when i started nothing terrible happened but i also wasn't super confident but i just waited for the pace to come for to me and i think that's something that's helped me a lot during these long runs is not forcing a specific pace and if you look at this run i am never going to be able to repeat these splits exactly as they have them here because this was just a really nice and natural run i just felt it out and i let whatever pace was coming come to me and that's the biggest thing with these middle miles here that got tough i wasn't forcing i wasn't pushing as i felt a little bit more confident speeding up i just tried to hold on to that pace and that's what worked so that's that's what got us through to mile 19 mile 20 again this is what we were talking about a little bit earlier is i i came onto that main road there on 51 and it's a little bit tough with that terrain change we dropped down to 620 and again i didn't let that get in my head that's that's something that I've been trying to do a little bit better job at too. I have this mantra of in the mile, win the mile. So just focus on whatever mile I'm running, try to make that the best mile and execute as I should for that mile. So if it's mile 10 and we just ran a 659, well, let's hold a 650 again. If it's mile 20 or 21 and we just ran a 622 and we know we need to fast finish, that means holding a six flat pace and dropping down. And so that's what I was able to do on mile 21 here not letting one bad mile get to me. That's another mantra, right? Just throw out the bad mile. If you have a bad mile at 20, you should move on to 21. Keep it moving and grooving. Keep it rocking. And that's what we did. Mile 21, 604. Mile 22, a little bit of downhill assistance here coming back into the neighborhood. I love finishing on this downhill assisted mile. We got a 543. So a sub six mile, really strong, fast finish. I'm proud of this one because I wasn't in, I, I wasn't thinking I was going to crush it at the end like this, but alpha flies were great for that. And my two best runs in this were probably the, the run I did. Oh, the first run out of the box was great. I did a 12 mile tempo. And then today this was an awesome run. And I also had a great a long run in this a few months ago where I did a fast finish. So this is a great shoe for faster long runs. I did want to talk about the stability for a sec here. So 
you don't have a lot of foam under the heel, but it is decently wide. And I felt that with, especially when landing more midfoot. So it was really nice for keeping me feeling like I was in control of the shoe. And there wasn't any times in this whole run where I felt like I was out of control, even dropping it down to 540. I still felt like I was in control of the pace, not going all out. I was probably tilting that at 8.5 or nine, maybe an eight to 8.5 out of 10 still had a little bit left in the tank and i think i probably could have just ran a few more miles to go the full 26 but i'm not i'm not there yet maybe maybe we'll start mixing in some 26s again during training even though that triggers some folks out there but i'm not there just yet but we did get a nice 22 today which is another feather in the cap for training so whatever your training goals are man long runs are super important and i also want to say whatever your training goals are when you execute weekly to make progress towards that goal, give yourself, give yourself a pat on the back. Nice work. And that's what we did today. We committed to doing the 20 mile long runs again this block and first one down. All right, a little snack time action. PB and J, best jam ever again on the team rose bread. Probably what, 400 calories? Replenishing some carbs? Let's do it. Probably have some oat milk too. Bang. A little charcuterie. Bang. It does look nice, right? Should I say it or do you want to say it? Bang. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Pesto pasta, asparagus, beyond sausage, banging. All right, guys, it is 742. Three square meals in the books, and now we're sipping on some athletic, non alcoholic beer here. These things are absolutely clutch. I've been trying a few new brands too. Uh, what is it? Brew Dog is is there okay? And then the Trail Pass by Sierra Nevada is super good. But it is now time to call it a day. We got some good running in. We got some good eating in. I'll probably have a little bit of a late night snack. I always like to make sure I'm topped up on my calories and carbs before bed. But I won't include that because this video is already almost an hour. But this was super fun. I love that we're back in the groove now. We're gonna run in some great shoes this week. Let's see. I'm trying to think what we're gonna run in tomorrow. I think we might hit. A double day i'm not sure but we're gonna have a lot of fun this week we got some new shoes coming and we got some oldies that we're gonna pile the miles on so as always guys i appreciate you watching and i'll be back tomorrow let me see if i can do that again and i'll be back tomorrow with another video keep it rocking keep it spinning keep it grooving nice work everybody it's still going baby keep going keep going Play that beat.